Hello everyone, good morning. It is 10 a.m. on Sunday and I am starting this readathon. get into it. I figured I would go over some of the books that I downloaded on my Kindle that are like a potential TBR. Quite a few of these I actually do have in physical copy as well. I'm not sure what I'm going to be reading. I haven't decided, but I do have options. So first we have If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nolan. I am 4% into this book. Like I've read the first two chapters and the writing is bad thus far but i've heard a lot of people talk about this book about how it like sad it is i think it's like a ya romance but i think it has like a tragic ending it's on kindle unlimited but i'm just not sure if i'm gonna mesh with the writing style so maybe we'll give that one a go not sure next we have dark places by gillian flynn this is one that i do have on my physical shelf i recently bought it's the only gillian flynn out of her like main three books that i haven't read yet that's definitely an option we also have uprooted by naomi novik this is a standalone fantasy I discovered this through the book Leo, I believe is her channel name. I love her videos and she recommended this a few years ago. Yeah, that might be something that we pick up as well. So those are all the books that I have on my Kindle. Of course, I also have like tons of books over on my shelves, so we'll see. But I think for now, I'm going to keep reading If He Had Been With Me and see how it goes. I've got my Fresca, got my stopwatch. Let's do it. Josh's meal prepping in the back, so ignore him. It has been three hours and 17 minutes, and I just finished If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nolan. I will be giving this a two star. <laughs> the ending was sad, but you like know pretty much what's gonna happen in chapter one. Like this book doesn't really like leave anything up for guessing or for a twist. Like everything is super obvious and is hinted at very early and yeah i don't know it just wasn't great it's about a girl named autumn and her best friend and neighbor growing up is his boy finney and then in middle school autumn just decides that she is too cool for school and she just decides that she just wants to be like some like rebel girl and like she doesn't want to hang out with the cheerleaders anymore she doesn't want to be popular and in doing that she kind of like pushes Finny away and in her head she's like oh we just stopped being friends but in Finny's head Finny's like bitch what the fuck like she just stopped talking to me Autumn is basically just like insufferable kind of stops talking to Finny hanging out with Finny and she dates another person Finny dates another person and so like the majority of the book is just them dating other people this book was published in 2013 so do with that information what you will every contemporary YA book that I've picked up lately the main character has just been so annoying. Like the whole like, I'm not like other girls, like I'm different. Like this girl literally needs to be different so badly that just for like a bit of attention, she starts wearing a tiara every day <laughs> to school. Mm -hmm. Like all throughout high school, this bitch wears a tiaras every day. The ending was just so predictable. And I just, I don't know. So many people say that this book is like so sad. It makes them cry, but I feel like just because there's a character death doesn't mean it's a good good or sad book. And this just was neither of those things, so. Two stars, not for me. I think I'm just learning that YA contemporaries are not really for me. I have, I'm like very particular about which YA contemporaries I like. They're teenagers, so they act like teenagers, you know? And that's fine, I get it. I was a teenager once too, we've all been there, like comparing ourselves to everybody, nitpicking everyone else, like jealousy, wanting to be cool, wanting to be different, wanting to be special, like, it's normal to feel like that when you're a teenager, but I just think I'm like past the point of like wanting to read about characters that have that mindset because I'm just like, now that I'm an adult, I've graduated college, I'm living my life. I realize like how trivial and stupid it is. So like reading about it, I just can't like relate or like the characters. So maybe I'm just growing out of like YA contemporary romance. Maybe I'm just 
maybe it's just not for me. I do really still like YA fantasy and like YA dystopian, but I don't know, three hours, 22 minutes. At least it was a quick read. It, you know, got the timer going, so that was nice. Okay, I put my hair up, I washed my face, and I changed into my hoodie so I could be maximum comfort mode. And I've decided that for my second read, I'm going to pick up Uprooted by Naomi Novik. I'm kind of craving a physical book right now, so... This is a standalone fantasy. There are already so many other series that I'm in the middle of or other series that are like high on my priority list. I've been really interested in standalone fantasies lately, so I hope I like this one. If you have any standalone fantasy wrecks, leave them in the comments, but. He takes a girl to his tower and 10 years later, he lets her go. But by then she's someone different. Her clothes are too fine and she talks like a courtier and she's been living alone with a man for 10 years. So of course she's ruined. <laughs> I will say I have no idea how to pronounce her username. <laughs> her username? <laughs> her name. I have no idea how to pronounce her name. Agnieszka. Okay. Okay, hello everyone. It is currently 5 p.m. and I have been reading for six hours and 20 minutes. I only got to page 100-ish and I'm actually enjoying it a lot so far. It's very like fairy tale esque like the fantasy in this is super whimsical. It doesn't necessarily make the most sense logically and there's a lot of like suspending your disbelief that you have to do while reading it, but I'm I'm not having a problem doing that. I think it's well written. I like the characters and it's pretty like fast paced. Like a lot is happening, even though we're only a hundred pages in. I'm definitely getting like a little bit antsy and just like tired of just sitting on the couch. So I think I'm going to stop reading this for now because I'm gonna listen to an audiobook and do my nails. I took off the other nails that I had on earlier because half of them had popped off anyway. So I need to give myself a new set of nails. So I'm gonna do that and listen to an audiobook. And I think I know exactly what I'm gonna go for. So I think I'm gonna start listening to Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. Yes, Hannah Grace. This is on my winter TBR and the audiobook is on Scribd. The ebook is on Kindle Unlimited. So I can read it and listen to it as I please. So I think I'm gonna start listening to this go do my nails, maybe get some coloring done. I don't know, just get off of the couch. Okay, hello everyone, I am back. I had some dinner, as you saw, I made like a little stir fry. It was like an egg roll in a bowl with some rice and I finished my nails, I just did some basic like jelly pink almond shaped ones and we are eight hours in to the 24 hour readathon i think i got to like chapter seven or eight of icebreaker audiobook we're making progress we're still going strong it's currently like 7 30 p.m so for the next few hours i'm just gonna try and keep reading even though i can feel myself like getting distracted and wanting to just like watch youtube and i think just to like spice things up a bit uh i'm gonna take an edible so this might either really help my reading experience and just you know make it a lot of fun or it might really hinder it but we're just gonna see how it goes it's sunday night i'm feeling crazy i do want to give you guys a little bit of an update for icebreaker i'm actually enjoying it I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Granted, I am just listening to the audiobook, so I haven't been paying like super close attention to all the details, but so far, to me, it feels like what the deal wishes it was. Like it's a hockey, ice skater, college romance. It's one of my favorite college romances that I've read thus far. Of course, we still have 
majority of the book to go so that very well could change but right now first like seven chapters i'm enjoying it actually i love that there's no typical like slut shamey gross behavior from any of the characters and the men in the book like there's a few men obviously there's nate who's like the main guy in this book he seems like pretty nice and cool like he is a bit of a fuck boy but he's like trying to be actively better and he's just not like gross like like some of the other book boyfriends I've read about. There's also a guy named Ryan and I'm really hoping we get a book with Ryan because I know that this is going to be like a interconnected standalone kind of series similar to the off-campus series and so I'm really hoping that we get Ryan's book. I really like Ryan. He's like probably my favorite character thus far. I, I'm liking Anastasia, the main girl. She's sassy, she's snarky, she holds grudges um, which some people might not like but I think it's like a fun dynamic. It's like reverse grumpy sunshine almost. I do want to say that there are definitely definitely like trigger warnings for eating disorders and weight and stuff like that so I've never heard anyone that's talked about this book mention that so I just wanted to put that out there I mean obviously definitely check trigger warnings for any book you read yeah I just kind of wanted to briefly mention that because it was an aspect that I like wasn't expecting I'll probably continue reading on my kindle I would like to at least be able to finish one of the two books before I go to bed tonight and then we will resume the reading vlog tomorrow Okay, ignore how like trash my lighting is right now. I'm actually in a book. <laughs> okay. I'm actually on a buddy read call with my friend Mana right now. So we've just been like chatting, talking about what we're reading. And I, in the meantime, went on my Kindle to download the Icebreaker books. Tell me why it got taken off of Kindle Unlimited and I had no idea. So that's fucking disrespectful. Mourning the loss of not being able to read Icebreaker because I was actually, <laughs> I was actually enjoying it. That's so depressing. Okay, well, bye. Let's address the elephant in the room. I'm taking down my Christmas tree this weekend. I'm so sorry, it's out of hand, but I'm just lazy and I like the lighting. So good morning, or should I say good afternoon? It is currently 1246 the next day. Unfortunately, my phone updated and it cleared my damn stopwatch. <sighs> but last night I got to 15 hours and you may think that that's enough time for me to have finished a book. <laughs> but no, you, you would be wrong. Um, I was buddy reading with my friend Mana and we spent a lot of time chatting about the books we were reading. And so didn't get as much reading done as I would like but we're gonna finish the rest of the nine hours. I'm about 72% done with Icebreaker and 30% done with Uprooted, so I'm definitely gonna finish Icebreaker today. And then I'll just decide if I want to just commit and finish Uprooted or if I wanna like pick up something else. I don't know, we'll see how we're feeling. Overall, I'm really liking both of the books so far. I will say though, with Icebreaker, I don't understand why the synopsis is the way that it is because it literally spoils like half the book. Like if you want to read Icebreaker, do not read the synopsis. <laughs> I hate when book synopsis have like big spoilers in them. That doesn't make any sense to me. Some of the stuff in the synopsis doesn't happen until the halfway point of the book. So yeah, don't read the synopsis. And I know this book is starting to get mixed reviews, but in my opinion, this is the deal, but 10 times better, honestly. As many of you know, I did not enjoy the deal. I found the love interest Garrett to be just like quite gross and misogynistic. And the writing was just not very good but I feel like this is the deal but better my only issue with it so far is the plot is kind of all over the place like it's definitely not very concise like it's kind of hard to even explain what's happening in the book because the plot kind of changes every like 20 percent I definitely don't think it's gonna be like a five star but right now I'm like feeling a strong four <gasps> hi Bookie. hi so she said I need pets right now I don't care if you're filming I need pets right now do not flash your eyes. Don't, oh. I'm so sorry you guys had to see that. Sushi, didn't anyone teach you not to flash your asshole to cameras? Anyway, I've started the timer again. I'm gonna keep reading and we're gonna finish Icebreaker. Not Stas tying him up on the kitchen counter. Oh. <laughs> the Uber scene and the kitchen counter scene. Yes. Oh. 
Okay, I finished Icebreaker. It was great. Uh, as expected, I will be giving it four stars. And I'm very excited to hopefully get to read more books from this author. I, I had a great time. It was fun. It's been two hours, which means we have seven hours left. So now I just need to decide if I want to focus on finishing Unrooted or if I want to start something else. Okay, I'm getting myself a refill and I'm gonna get a snack. I think I'm gonna have some grapes because I've decided what I'm going to read or listen to rather, because I'm gonna listen to an audiobook. If you're not familiar with the process of getting lash extensions, basically you sit in a chair with your eyes closed for like two hours, okay? And so when I went to my first eyelash appointment, I started an audiobook and that audiobook is I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. And I'm really loving it so far. I mean, I'm sure you don't need me to tell you how good it is. Everyone's raving about this memoir. It is phenomenal if you have even an inkling of interest, I recommend it, but I love the audiobook because it is narrated by Jeanette herself and it's just like crazy. Like it is so wild. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to this and I'm going to color, eat some grapes, maybe go to the gym. I should be able to finish this no problem. So I'm not going to spoil any like big details from this book, um, but she's talking about how she used one of her first acting paychecks to buy Sims. <laughs> Me, bitch. I'll be playing Sims later tonight on Twitch, so thought that was funny. Okay, hello everyone. I just hit nine hours and five minutes, so that means I have been reading for 24 hours and five minutes. <laughs> I finished the audiobook for I'm Glad My Mom Died and it was so good. It was heartbreaking. At times it was very difficult to listen to. Me as a child watching iCarly, watching Sam and Cat, seeing Jeanette as, you know, a celebrity, a famous actress, and like my views of how I would have pictured her life to be versus the reality of what she was really going through and what she was really feeling like, it was just wild and the writing is so funny which is so you know such a juxtaposition to the sad topics that you're talking about like you can definitely tell that Jeanette relied on humor to get through things and it shows in her writing and she's a great writer and it was it was a good book and then to finish off the last little bit of reading, I picked back up Uprooted. I didn't manage to finish this. I think I'm about like 40%. That is gonna be it for my 24 hour readathon. We got through three and a half books. So I'm pretty proud of myself. I'll definitely, definitely take that pat on the back. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to comment, like, subscribe, all that fun YouTube stuff. And I will see you all in my next vlog. I'm gonna go to bed. I'm freaking tired and I will see you all very, very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.